Right, welcome to Snow Talk. Brian Good here on this Black Friday. We have several things to talk about, and we'll break it down for you all the way into the uh, mid portion, almost mid portion of December. As you guys know, this uh, the discussion, if you're new to it or if you're visiting in town and you're like, what in the world is he talking about? What is this Snow Talk stuff? There's no snow out there. Um, this is always a discussion that I do every day for snow lovers in the season. Um, we uh, refer to you guys as the Bots fans. You see there that Bots hashtag for bringing on the snow. Um, our good friend. Um, uh, Troy Cotter was uh, the one that was really, she was really a big fan of, of that name, and uh, we've, we've stuck with it there. So uh, we're always thinking of you, uh, Rob, and, and certainly Troy there. All right, we are keeping an eye, though, on the forecast in the coming days. And keep in mind that these are the things I'm going to show you that we're looking at for behind the scenes. It doesn't always reflect how our official forecast looks on air, uh, and that's because our confidence level isn't always as high uh, on the data I'm going to show you. But it gives you an idea of what could happen and what we're looking at, how things could trend and change one way or another. So we want to be as transparent as we can for you guys, and that's what I love doing about these blocks. So it's kind of fun stuff to do. I know it's nerdy stuff and technical. I'm trying not to be the best I can, but it just happens naturally sometimes when you talk about weather. Okay, uh, it's cold for the shoppers today, as you all know, but it's going to be a nice and good day. We've got a few high clouds streaming in now across uh, the Wabash. Those will be here shortly, in fact. Uh, they're not going to block out much of the sun at all today. Just make for a mostly sunny, partly cloudy kind of deal, which is not bad. But we are going to warm up uh, well into the 50s. We have two fronts really on the map to deal with, and it's really hard to pinpoint how we're going to draw them out here. But uh, the first one will be rolling in uh, for tonight. Tomorrow morning it's going to be more of a moisture front, and there's a second one with the cold air behind it. Um, really, both of them are minor, but it's going to be hard to get two fronts coming through here without something getting squeezed out of those clouds. And I think the first one has a better chance to do it, which means the second one has no chance of doing it. Uh, but the good news is about that is the second one would have the cold air. The first one would not. So they're friends and enemies at the same time. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's Futurecast. As we do this evening, if you're heading to light up Louisville, it looks fine. No problems. Here comes the moisture front. It's hard to call it a cold front because it's not cold behind it, even though the wind shifts. And you see it's picking up a bit of moisture. It's trying its best to squeeze out what it can uh, during the overnight early morning period. So we're talking about just a few raindrops. If you wash your car or you're going to wash your car today, this is, gonna, this is the kind of stuff that's going to annoy you. It'll be just enough of a speckling to ruin... What you did. So if you watch the car day, or you're going to, you put it in the garage. <laughs> you don't want this to happen tomorrow morning. And don't blame me for it. Uh, it'll pass through. And here's the thing. It will likely impact Lexington very close to uh, certainly tailgating and perhaps the kickoff at noon. For the Governor's Cup, there could be a few sprinkles. It looks mainly cloudy for the start of the Governor's Cup. And then you'll break into sunshine. But it may take you guys a while to get into that sunny part. So we'll just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, we'll still see a decent amount of sun here and temperatures uh, still will make it to the 50s. But that secondary front comes in, that's the one that's going to cool us down. So then what happens next? Well, let's talk about the setup here. You're looking at a map that shows the temperatures aloft. Obviously, you get into the pinkers and pur pinkers. pinks and purples. <laughs> you get into the colder air, and then you got the rain and snow. Snow being the green on top of that, layered. And then you got the blue and pink. That's the wintry stuff. So they're on top of each other layered, so you get an idea what we're looking at. These are not surface temperatures. These are temperatures aloft. So as we head into Sunday, we've got a cooler setup. Now, really warm air across the plains. In fact, uh, these guys here across uh, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa may be looking at record highs to start the week off, near 70 at spots. We will get some more than here. We're not going to get to record level, but we will get some 60s, it looks like. Then here's where things get complicated, and we've talked about this all week, because the flow is fairly decent aloft into Canada, but these systems are getting pinched off uh, from the trough here in the northwest, so they kind of drift in underneath all the action going on in Canada. So it's hard to tell the, if the two will link up at all. They remain isolated. If isolated, then where do they go? Because they kind of wander like Mr. Magoo all over the place. So there's a lot of questions on how next week will play out. But in general, we'll see the first wave pass through Wednesday and Thursday with some showers. And then the second one, which is hard to see here, you will in a second, catches up to it and it tries to dig it in. And then it creates what we call the dynamic cooling, pulls in that upper low, gets some colder air involved in it, and then as a result, the northwest side can start to show something frozen. It would be a typical deal of uh, some snowflakes mixed in with rain. And I'm not saying here, I'm just saying this is what the low would likely do as it moved through the portions of Ohio Valley and the Appalachians. Uh, and then the GFS wants to take it up to the north, and then we try to warm back up, and we will uh, for the first several days of December after this passes by. Now the Euro, Similar but different on the setup how this evolves. It's got the Sunday cool weather. Here comes the warmth. Got that. Market warmth or the plains. We discussed that. Then it brings in that little low into here. So it's not as much of a front as it is a low. 
And I like what the Euro's doing on this because this is the pattern that's been showing up for a while for the idea of cutoff low scenario. I saw this on Monday, I think it was, and the pattern is favorable for this, and the Euro seems to be matching the patterns of the Euro's the way we are leaning our forecast toward when you see it. So we have the first slope moves on by. This one, though, kind of drags itself up to Lake Erie, but then the second one digs, just like the GFS does, so they're not too far off in that idea is what I mentioned. It digs it in, but it digs it in, digs it a little more due east, if not southeast, kind of takes it over the Smoky Mountains. And that is a bit odd of a track, um, but it does do the same thing, dynamic cooling. You get, see it's colder in eastern Kentucky than it is in Chicago, aloft. So it's a dynamic cooling event. That's why you got snow showing up, not everywhere in the green, but only in the middle because that's a higher elevation. So the dynamic cooling pulls the cold air down. If you're higher up on the ground level, then obviously you're gonna be more into the cold air and therefore you get the mountain snow. So this could be just a mountain deal and nothing for us. We'll see how it plays out. We've got a week to watch this, guys. It moves on out and then we try to warm back up again at a slower fashion. But in general, here's the theme. When you look at the ensembles from the Euro, they certainly show the blowtorch warmth that we always talk about um, in these setups, and it's certainly going to be a case for the Plains into the Midwest for early next week. Again, we'll get a taste of that. It does show that little small cutoff low idea, the dynamic cooling right over the Appalachians there. The ensembles have that, mind you. And then as we head into December, we got a warm spell after that, and then we get into December 8th and 9th, and then we start to see some cool, colder air settling up in the Ohio Valley and the East Coast. Now, a lot of that, because the ensembles also say it's going to be wetter than normal. It could be a lot of dynamic cooling events, a lot of cool uh, low pressures, upper lows. So we could be running into a scenario where this is not exactly true cold weather when it comes to source regions. Like you pull in Arctic air and you get these big storms. This could be somewhat modified uh, cold air to work with, and you got a lot of precipitation, so you can get dyna dynamic cooling events. And, yeah, you can get to a cold rain or kind of iffy stuff on the frozen. I'm not too thrilled on the setup here for the 8th and 9th. I don't think it's that impressive. Uh, but it is more of a colder regime than what we'll have for next week when it comes to the 50s and 60s. That is looking to be the way to go here after, say, the 8th or 9th of the month. Uh, even the GFS ensembles show that as we get toward the 8th and 9th in that general area, we're going to see more of a cooling effect in the east, but it could be very active on the radar too. So a very wet period potentially approaching the second week of uh, December and cooler. Is it going to be cool enough to, cold, cold enough to snow? I can't answer that question. Uh, all I can tell you is that the setup like this will put us favorable in that zone, but you're not going to be able to see that kind of a detail until we get right up on it. And that's a long way off, guys. So in general, the snowboard, I'll account for maybe some snowflakes maybe east of us, that dynamic cooling without a little low digging in about a week from today. But beyond that and before that, I'm not thrilled. So we'll see what happens as we head toward the latter 10 days of the month of December. That still is the focal point for something to change. We just got to figure out what kind of a change, but uh, still seeing signs of it getting colder. And uh, we'll get there, guys, so be patient. We'll have more on all this coming up. Uh, I'll be back here on Monday. See you then.